Hello everybody, Mr. Fusion here. Not entirely rested up from Dragon Ball Dissection December, but still wanting to put something out because I just got back from seeing Dragon Ball Super Broly. I'm also a little bit, uh, not under the weather, but I was very, very sick right after Dragon Ball Dissection December. We're talking multiple days of about 103 degree fever. So the only thing I have left from that is, uh, I have a cough, so if I cough, that's the reason why. Hopefully not. It's mostly gone, I think. But, um, yeah, doing a Dragon Ball Super Broly video because people have been asking me about my opinion on this movie, and I finally saw it last night. Uh, Geekdom 101's always breathing down my neck saying, you gotta do a video on this thing. You know, gotta go see this thing. You gotta do a video on it. But, you know, so, yeah, I'm doing a video. Don't be mad at me. You know, I'm doing the thing you want me to do. Okay, so, um, first of all, Broly. Is it B R O L Y or B R O L I? That yeah, seems like a silly question, but uh, no, it, it is. It is out there, and it's uh, something that's been that's been plaguing me for the past few months. I wouldn't say plaguing me because I honestly was not giving too much thought about this movie until I saw it. But um, I Funimation is always for their dub, consistently spelled it as B R O L Y. However. Uh, as you may or may not know, Broly is a pun on the word broccoli, which is spelled B-R-O-C-C-O-L-I. And it's just broccoli with the center syllable taken out. So, the official subtitles have always spelled it B-R-O-L-I, to make that broccoli connection more clear. But the, this movie, even in the Japanese poster, has sort of standardized it as B-R-O-L-Y. Uh, so, I don't know, you... You guys know me. I don't usually. Uh, I don't. I'm not. I don't necessarily feel beholden to whatever official spellings are. Uh, you know, Funimation has always had their history of kind of changing things or screwing things up. And the Japanese side of things, in terms of English lettering, have a track re track record of being inaccurate and inconsistent as well. So, uh, but it's not a hill I want to die on. In this case, it's kind of like. For me, the, the Frieza thing, F-R-I-E-Z-A versus F-R-E-E-Z-A, and obviously I'm sticking with F-R-E-E-Z-A, but uh, it's, it's close enough that it doesn't really bother me that the I is in there, uh, in Frieza's case, because it's still, the pun is still clear enough. Um, you know, I'm kind of all over the place with these things, whatever I, whatever I think you know, with what knowledge I have, whatever I think is best. Because a lot of people were telling, you know, getting on to me for using Resurrection F as a title, uh, Funimation's title. And, like, a lot of the people on my side of the fandom were calling it, uh, like, Revival of F. And in my case, I was just thinking, well, you know, Resurrection F, that that's pretty accurate. Gets the point across, rolls off the tongue well. I'm not going to split hairs with it. I'll go with Funimation's title because, in this case, it works. So I just always use my best judgment. In this case... I haven't decided yet, because I don't really have that much connection to Broly to begin with, but whatever, I'm wasting enough time talking about this. And it's like, you know, I'm going to try to be as brief as possible, but whenever I seem to do a vlog, it ends up being at least half an hour, and you guys know the answer to this better than I do. You're, you guys get to see the timestamp. I have no idea what's happened yet. I don't even know what I've said. So, let's get to this movie. Um... I think the question most people have been wanting to know, because this it's been about three and a half years-ish since the last movie, and I have consistently said unkind things about it, to put it mildly. I thought Resurrection F was a terrible movie, an absolute travesty in regards to fiction in general. It's just, it's just bad. It's just really, really bad and boring and terrible and ugh. Um... So people have always asked me, is, is this, do you think this movie is better than Resurrection F? Yes. By a, by a country mile, yes. It is leagues better than this. It is leagues better than the Tournament of Power, which was also a crime against fiction. Um, but obviously that is not a very high standard to hold it to. Uh, it, w it is not hard to be better than either of those things because they're both so terrible. Um, I didn't hate this movie. I did not hate this movie. I can't say I loved it either. It was hard for me to muster any strong emotions one way or the other about this movie. There were definitely things that I enjoyed. There were a lot of things I enjoyed about this movie. 
but at the same time, it didn't exactly wow me either. It was enjoyable. I'd watch it again. Um, it was not bad. But I guess the best way I can sum this up, and if you've been following me on Twitter or Facebook, you've probably seen this, seen me make this comparison already. But basically, when people talk about great fiction a lot, the phrase comes up that the or, or, you know, fiction or just you know, any kind of project that has come together, people t typically say the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. That that this is a, a kind of a melting pot or amalgamation where the the mixture just works so well that even its individual elements sort of pale in comparison to the product that it put together. Either because it's just that good or because people didn't think those individual elements were that great in the first place, but somehow you put them together and this, this fusion, if you will, ends up being really, really good. Now, Dragon Ball Super Broly is kind of the opposite. The whole is less than the sum of its parts, which is definitely a problem. There are a lot of great things in this movie. A lot of funny things, a lot of interesting things, a lot of well-directed, well-animated things, a lot of good story beats. Which again, I couldn't say any of those things about Resurrection F. Not a one. Um, but they don't really manage to coalesce, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, there, there, are, there are elements that, that work really well on their own, but they don't really come together to make a make a satisfying whole, or at least as satisfying as I think it could have been and, and should have been. Uh, for for example, the uh, pretty much any of the the first half of the movie is all stuff that takes place in the past, as far as Dragon the you know as far as Dragon Ball Super's present is concerned. All stuff having to do with Frieza and Planet Vegeta and the Saiyans, things of that nature. Um, Pretty much any of it that doesn't have to do directly with Broly's story doesn't really have a place in this movie. They could, though the scenes uh, regarding Frieza taking over the Empire, uh, which, which was really interesting on its own, and all the Dragon Ball Minus related stuff, which is less interesting on its own, could pretty much be cut out of the movie and you wouldn't even recognize, you wouldn't even notice they were, they were missing. Um, and that's, that's kind of the problem. Is it that that's what I mean when I say it doesn't really coalesce together? Um, because I enjoyed seeing this stuff. I, I was a little bit. I mean, it kind of surprised me. I mean, first of all, as I as I've said in my cell arc videos, I would rather King Cold not have been created in the first place. I feel he does kind of diminish Frieza in a way. Um, so it does it does feel kind of weird to me that not only not only was Frieza. Um, What am I trying to say? Not only is Frieza uh, a later... Frieza took, after, took over the Empire after characters... like Pretty much every Frieza arc major character was established. Like, you know, Bardock was part of... Uh, Bardock. Pfft. Zarbon was part of this. Dory was part of this. The Ginyu Special Squadron were all part of this before Frieza ever took over. And that, that seems kind of weird to me. And also the fact that... Um, Frieza was only in charge for five years before he blew up all the Saiyans. That doesn't bother me. I, I thought that was a really interesting interesting thing. Uh, it's just not how I would have pictured it, not how I would have guessed it. It's, it seems kind of odd, but you know, I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, but it has nothing to do with Dragon Ball Super Broly. It's all, it's all pretty much just, you guys wanted to see more backstory with Frieza and the Saiyans, so here you go. But it has nothing to do with anything. Uh, except for the scenes, obviously, that, that are that are Broly related, that set up his his childhood and his backstory and how he got to be where he was. Uh, those the rest of it's all kind of pointless. And they're good, but they're pointless. Now, the the second big question people have been just hounding me ever since these trailers came out is about Dragon Ball Minus, because um, my Dragon Ball Minus review, which is almost two years old at this point. Um, is one of the most popular videos that I've done. I'm getting water. Um, <clears throat> and my my hatred for Dragon Ball Minus, which I'm not going to get into here because I've already done like a 25 minute video on that. Um, and the, you know it's 
scripted and would say it a lot better than I can say it just sitting in front of a camera talking, you know, talking off, off script could ever do. But people have been really interested to know how I felt about this, but, um, which is, which was good for the video because I got that a huge second wind out of that, which was kind of nice. So thanks for watching. Uh, you know, thanks for finding that video. Thanks to Dragon Ball Super Broly. I'm not going to complain about that, but, um, it's weird the way people have sort of brought, the way people were bringing it to my attention, I guess I should say. Uh, and it was, it was almost always the same way. Uh, they would make a comment on that video going, well, you know, Dragon Ball Minus is canon now, which I found just really, really odd. Uh, really odd that people would word it that way. Because, I mean, just to run, run down, run this down for a second, um, Dragon Ball Minus was written exclusively by Toriyama, and it was in a Dragon Ball spin-off prequel. I, I don't I don't see how you get more official, you know, if you're going to use the word canon, how you could get more canon than that. I mean, Dragon Ball Minus has been around for almost half a decade now. Uh, so now suddenly it's in this movie and it's canon now? Like that that just that seems so ridiculous to me. Uh, so I don't know, I just I, I just found that really, really bizarre that people would phrase it that way i mean look people sometimes act like canonicity is like a popularity contest like if you say you know like you know it's tied into your personal feelings on this thing um so so i guess people assume that if i say that i hate dragon ball minus that i'm stricken it from continuity as if i have that kind of power i don't know um but i don't know it's 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 been there. I, like uh, this, this is no. This shouldn't be a surprise to anybody that it would, you know, it would be considered part of the Dragon Ball mythos now. As as terrible as that is, you know, there really wasn't any doubt in my mind. It didn't surprise me. It disappointed me that it came up in this movie, but it didn't, you know, it didn't surprise me in the least. Um, so going off of that, people asked me if I thought that Dragon Ball Minus would be better. If this movie could somehow fix the problems of Dragon Ball Minus, um, and and I, I definitely admitted there could be some potential for that to a certain extent, because um, I do think that Dragon Ball Minus could be better served, uh, or could be better in service to another story, as opposed to being presented as as a standalone kind of thing. You know, as as a you know, it could work as a flashback or you know, a part of a greater whole kind of thing that's used to prop up another story, possibly, potentially, and and yes, and one of my problems with Dragon Ball Minus was that it felt really, really rushed. That it wasted about a third of its r very short runtime uh, doing pointless things, making pointless cameos, you know, rather than fleshing out its characters, and and so yeah, with with more time. Uh, and maybe an animation with music and voice acting, it, it could actually make me care about Bardock and Gine, which I thought that the original chapter failed at doing utterly. Um, but the problem is, uh, as I say in my video, Dragon Ball Minus is just completely flawed in its conception in general. It'd have to be completely rebuilt from the ground up to make it good. But, <clears throat> um, yeah, I guess I could say it was, you know, slightly better in those ways that I mentioned before in this movie. Uh, it almost, you know, the, the music, the way the music worked when they're sending Goku off almost made me forget that this was really, really stupid. But, uh, but like I said, the problem is, um, I, I was under the impression that the movie was trying to sort of set up these three Saiyan lead characters, Goku, Vegeta, and Broly, and, and use these past scenes as a way of demonstrating their, their differences, uh, you know, that would sort of be the unifying thread here. Or or even just to show the effect that Frieza had on their lives. But I didn't, I never really felt that there was any connection between any of these things. Like I said, it just seemed more like it was, um, you know, and I, I hate to use the term because, again, a lot, a lot of this stuff was, you know, good or at least handled well. But it was essentially kind of fanservice-y. 
It was just, oh, you wanted to see how Frieza became the leader of the Frieza Empire. Here you go. You know, you, you wanted to see Frieza meet King Vegeta for the first time. You know, you wanted to see you know, how Goku got to Earth, even though we saw that five years ago. Dragon Ball Minus has been a thing for quite a while, okay? Um, you know, stuff like that, as opposed to actually tying this all together. Uh... And I, I don't know if that was if they that was what they were going for and they just failed or if they weren't really thinking it through, but uh, it just it doesn't really do that. You just you see these things and then they go away, and because the problem is is that you know Goku and Vegeta don't, don't really have much to do in the past scenes, but then again they don't have much to do in the present scenes either. The fact of the matter is this movie really doesn't have anything to do with the regular Dragon Ball cast. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it kind of, it, it, it thinks that it does when it doesn't. Goku and Vegeta are really only in this movie to fight Broly. And they, I don't know, if anybody's a Star Trek fan, the, the last episode of season two of, Star, of the original series of Star Trek um, was a backdoor pilot. You don't, know, you don't know what a backdoor pilot is, it's when <clears throat> the pilot for a new show is basically built into an episode of an existing show. So it'll be like... You know, so and so go, goes to visit their family, these cousins we never heard about before, and they basically take over the entire show because the whole point is getting this new show off the ground. Well, the last episode of, of the second season of Star Trek, because they thought that Star Trek was going to be canceled, there was a backdoor pilot for this other show that, that Gene Roddenberry wanted to get off the ground. And so, you know, all the Star Trek characters are there, but they're kind of in the background. Like Kirk and Spock show up and they do things, but it's not really important. Uh, and they feel more like guest stars. It feels like they're guest starring in somebody else's show rather than these new people guest starring in that show. And that's kind of what it feels like in this movie. Uh, is that the movie is about it's about Broly. It's about Frieza. It's about Paragus. It's about uh, Chi-Li. It's about... It's about... Jeez, uh, what's his name? Um... Uh, Really? Uh, limo. Sorry. Limo. Um, it's about these characters, and then about halfway through, you know, Goku and Vegeta get involved so they can punch Broly for a while. Uh, so it doesn't really feel like it's their movie, and that's part of why there doesn't seem to be any connection here. Because you, you see Vegeta as a kid. You see Goku as a kid. And then you see them as adults, and they don't really have any role in the story. So it's just... That's what makes it a problem. Not, not because, you know, you, you could do a Dragon Ball side story type of thing. You don't have to focus on Goku and Vegeta. I'm not docking points for that. I'm docking points... Imaginary points. I don't know, I just said that. Um, docking points, lowering its score... I don't know what, um, just because they're in the movie and the movie acts like they are part of the movie when they're really not. Uh, and those, those really needed to have some kind of unifying factor. <clears throat> like, get, like get to focus on more of Goku and Vegeta as characters, um, how, how they react to Broly, um, how they see themselves as different, how they see themselves as similar, that kind of relationship that you know, forces that. And there's a little bit of that. Uh, especially with Goku, but it's just, it's not really enough. Um, something I haven't covered in any of the posts I've made so far is is the character of Paragus. Um, no, actually, no, first, I'm going to talk about Broly, because, um, you know, the, the, the big draw to this movie is it's Toriyama's take on this character he didn't create, kind of like Dragon Ball Minus was. Um, it fared a lot better than Dragon Ball Minus did in this case. Um, I... I I'm kind of indifferent to Broly in general, and the fact that he was made as the focus of this film worried me before I saw it, because it really just seemed like that kind of, we're going to focus on fan y things. Broly's a popular character. Let's try to shoehorn him into this, um, even though the Tournament of Power basically did what was, you know, a female Broly or their version of Broly kind of thing. But now we're now we got to get literal and actually do Broly. Um... The Broly movies are not my favorites, by any stretch. Like the the original three Broly movies are not my favorites, uh, by by any stretch. I don't hate them. I don't really have much of an opinion of Broly. 
Although I will say, I'll, I'll give them credit there, uh, just to use as a counterexample. <clears throat> say what you will about the whole Goku and Broly crying thing. At least, at least it gave them a solid link. It gave them a connection. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen that movie, so I, I, I'm not even going to pass judgment on that movie right now. But 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 at least at least it uh, you know as to whether or not that was a good connection or it really worked, um, but at least it was a connection. Those past scenes existed for a really solid reason. You, you needed those scenes in the film to understand their connection, uh, both literally and kind of symbolically. Where this movie didn't really have that. Um, but Broly was, I guess I could say, more interesting here than he was in those previous movies or at least had the potential to be because the scenes that have to do with Broly the past scenes and the present scenes are all really interesting and they lay some really good groundwork for his character um with uh, and there's some really interesting connection here with with um <clears throat> Chi Lai and and um I just did it again uh, Lemo, jeez, <laughs> keep forgetting this. I almost wanted to just call him Yoda, but um, though those characters are great, actually, the, uh, the, the 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 story is really about those characters, not Goku and Vegeta. Um, and so once the fighting started, I only wish I could see more of them because they were really starting to build a relationship, and it actually made this uh, feel like a real movie rather than an extended fight scene kind of thing. Resurrection F felt like an extended fight scene, and that was really boring. Uh, but we actually got scenes of character development, of, of learning who these people are, and, their, and, and, the, and them seeing them build a relationship with each other, and that was all really, really interesting. And of course, it's all kind of dropped once the fighting starts. You know, this really is just kind of uh, a, a huge, really... Uh, obvious dividing line in this film between story and fight and I, I don't know what it is with Dragon Ball lately that cannot properly blend these things together so that you have appropriate peaks and valleys of action so that one you know that any one thing doesn't get too overwhelming and overstay its welcome like they they really needed to break up this fight quite a bit more than they did um but they didn't and so it's basically just um Story stops, fighting starts, and that's the rest of the movie. Uh, which I've been warned would be the case. But the problem is, is that because of that, uh, while they lay all this groundwork for Broly to make him interesting, to make him sympathetic, they never really follow up on it. And that, that is the biggest flaw of this movie, I have to say. Um, <clears throat> is that. They... Because it feels like they wanted to do something with that. That there was this uh, this theme and this question of who is Broly? Uh, there's a person who hasn't had much control over his own life. Um, and is he just this mindless killing machine? Or is he this, this gentle spirit who was forced into fighting kind of thing? And the movie never really follows up on that. You have Paragus pulling him in one direction. And you have Chi-Li pulling him in another direction. And... Uh, the problem is, is that once the fighting starts, the biggest mistake is that they put Broly into Broly Smash mode the entire rest of the, the entire rest of the movie, basically. And that really was a mistake. That was a huge mistake. Uh, I, I, not, not, not that that happens at all. Not that he loses control at any point. That definitely needed to happen. But it should not have been the entire thing. Because Broly needed to find his humanity. And that never happens. He, he becomes basically a mindless automaton for the entire rest of the movie. He's never allowed to show any independence. He's never allowed to make any decisions. He's never allowed to have any agency. Even at the end of the movie, he's just wished back to where he started and he doesn't seem to have any opinion about it as far as we can see. So we never really learn who he is in, in his own mind. Because as, as, much as, I, as much as I love Chi Lai... I thought she was she again. I thought she and Limo were the best characters in this movie, by far, by far. Uh, but 
her argument in regards to Broly seemed wanting to me. Um, and I don't know if that's because a lot of scenes were cut from this. That's what I've heard. Um, but it's like, Chi Lai seems really convinced that she knows exactly who Broly is. And I just don't see it. Uh, it, it really feels like she's making a big leap in judgment here that's never really proven one way or the other. Which, which kind of brings me to Paragus here. Which I, I liked him a lot too. Um, and I'm, I'm not really sure if I should give the movie credit for this or not. I'm not, because I'm not sure what its intention was. Because, um, Paragus seems to exist, I'm not really sure how he's supposed to exist. Because I, I think I found him more sympathetic than the movie meant me to feel. Because the movie seems to pretty solidly come down on Chi Lai's side in regards to Broly and just label Paragus as this abusive, terrible father who, um, you know, who was using Broly for his own ends. And that is definitely there. Those elements are present, but it doesn't seem as black and white as that, which normally I would find very commendable because Dragon Ball needs more morally shades of gray type things done well. Um, you know, not just making their main characters into selfish idiots. Um, you know, as the plot demands. Cell arc. <clears throat> um, so I would love to give it credit for that. For, for it being kind of ambiguous. You know, as to who you're supposed to side with. But it really does seem like the movie wants you to side with Chi Lai, ultimately. And that, and that Paragus is just bad. But, I don't know, I, I found him really sympathetic in the flashback scenes. You know, he, he confronts the king over, over his son. You know, he flies off to a barren planet. I mean, sure, he's a murderous bastard and kills that poor other guy. Whatever. Um, I, I'm not saying he's a great guy. I'm not saying he's a wonderfully sympathetic person. But he's, he seems to have, like, layers to him, you know? He's, he's rough and he's stern and he has his own way of doing things. And he does seem to push Broly in a direction. And obviously he does do the whole shot collar thing. But... I find myself hard-pressed to disagree with him in a lot of cases. I mean, he did use it to stop Broly from killing somebody. I mean, you know, the guy was a jerk, but he didn't deserve to die kind of thing. Uh, you know, he, he does, Broly does lose control. Broly, you know, does threaten to destroy everything kind of thing. So it's like... You know, Paragus was not wrong, you know? King Vegeta might not have been wrong, even though he sort of just, I think he just made that up to as an excuse to get rid of him. Um, you know, so it's hard for me to say that, man, Paragus is such a jerk the way he treated Broly. Uh, and also, I don't really see anything that shows that Broly, you know, isn't a fighter, you know? Um, you could call it Stockholm Syndrome, but I mean, he does seem to, you know, genuinely love his father. Um, and, you know, it defends him against Chi Lai and, and Limo. And, and again, you could say that he's just sort of brainwashed. Um, you know, uh, it doesn't really have any, any basis of comparison to go on. But there, there's just not enough there to really uh, get at the heart of who Broly is. And since a movie never gives Broly any agency, you, don't, you never really understand what he wants. It's it's great that he has had that pet, that big bear tiger thing, whatever, and he wears his ear. Um, but that was the that was groundwork. It, it it needed to really take off after that, and then it just it just stopped. It just stopped. Uh, and and that that's the biggest problem because they they had the potential to have such a great character in Broly and on all of this entire group, but they really didn't take advantage of it. Or maybe they did and it's just lying on the cutting room floor. But just like with the cell arc featuring number 19 and number 20 as the main villains, I can only work with what you've given me. This, this is what you gave me, so this is, what I got, this is what I have to review. You didn't put it in the movie, I can't give you credit for it. Uh, for whatever those other things might be. But it might just seem like I'm picking on the movie when, like I said, there are a lot, are a lot of things to like about it. Um, you know, as, as far as Goku and Vegeta are not really part of the story, um, they still have some interesting things to do, or at least humorous things to do. They have some good banter. Uh, I, I love... I, I, Goku is really sort of charming and silly in this movie, and, and in a good way. And and the way it ends, I, I love the final scene, despite, uh, you know, other than the fact that Broly just sort of seems to kind of be there and doesn't really have an opinion of it. 
but you know Goku, you know coming to visit them and getting them set up, uh, despite the fact they don't seem to trust him. Uh, that 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 is actually really good Goku, and I've complained a lot about Goku's characterization in Dragon Ball Super in general, and pretty much everything after the Frieza arc. There there are problems, um, but I, I feel this sort of gets the right balance um, for Goku as the being a genuinely kind-hearted good person uh, who also loves to fight, and I, I think that really sort of got got that got that balance down perfectly. So I really enjoyed the final scene. Um, I, I have been a very vocal detractor of bringing Frieza back all the flippin' times we've done it. Um, and I still disagree with it in general. But Frieza is really good in this movie. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. He has some great moments, maybe even some of his best moments, period, as much as it pains me to say. Um, he, uh, just pretty much everything. Uh, he, he's just sadistically wonderful. I, I love his wish. I really do. Um, and I also love that it, you know, it's, if, if there is any sort of thematic significance or tying different stories, parallel stories together, the only time they actually success, successfully do that is with Bluma and Frieza, funnily enough. Uh, having her, you know, talk about wanting to use the Dragon Balls to, uh, to, to make herself five years younger and Frieza wanting the Dragon Balls to make himself five centimeters taller. And yeah, I don't care that we've done that before with, with Red, way back in the Red Ribbon Army. Uh, the, the way it's executed here is, is different enough and funny enough to, to be awesome. Um, you know, just you know, the fact that they have the same rationale. The, um, I don't want it to be too obvious, so I'm only going for this small amount. It's, it's just wonderfully absurd and great Dragon Ball related humor there. Uh, I, I love the fact that the minions basically run the gamut of every kind of question. Like, you know, you, you're, some of your other forms are taller. Why don't you just use that? You know, they even have like little little side, like sort of character design chart uh, thing there going on. And that, so that, that's that's awesome. It's hilarious. Um, the the fact that uh, uh, that Frieza kills Paragus. Um, there, there is definitely some dramatic resonance in the original telling of the story of having Broly kill his own father, ultimately. But, jeez, I don't know, it's just... Uh, Dragon Ball is not often that good when it comes to dark humor, and yet that was just perfect. Uh, you know, that he, decide, he decides to kill Paragus to see what effect that'll have on Broly, to see if that'll, you know, send him off on a new transformation, just like killing Kuririn, uh is what made Goku into a Super Saiyan. So he, he kills... He kills Paragus and then gets Broly's attention. Like, hey, somebody killed your dad, you know? And it's it's terrible, but it's hilarious. And and then uh, when Goku and Vegeta sort of um, pawn Broly off on Frieza, it's just like, you know, he's, he's in like Hulk Broly smash type mode. And they just fly up to Frieza and Broly just starts fighting him. And that that's also, that's also hilarious. Um, the problem is, which I've been saying for a while... Is that you know as great as those moments are, Frieza at this point has become a Saturday morning cartoon villain, and that's really frustrating. Um, he just basically twirls his mustache and flies away at the end, going, "I'll get you next time, gadget." You know, uh, and it's 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 pathetic. It really is pathetic. If if they were going to bring Frieza back, it should have just been one time, and then done well, like put some of his stuff here you know, into that one opportunity and then finish him off for good. Don't bring him back. Don't make him the flippin' Joker, okay? You know, the, the, because the thing about Dragon Ball that I've always really enjoyed is the fact that it never stays in one place for too long. It always progresses. It always moves forward. It always changes what it is. And, and the biggest problem with Super, in a nutshell, is just how stuck it is. It is stuck in this one place. And it never moves. It never grows. It never changes. It's basically just, oh, here's a new threat. Goku and Vegeta, go beat it up. They beat it up. Let's have another barbecue at Castle Corporation, and then let's do the whole thing over again next week, you know? Uh, there, there, there is no sense of growth. No sense of change. It's just, it, it fe uh, you know, even though the show itself is still serialized, the story arcs feel episodic now, you know? Um, so this movie is basically the same way. Uh, especially since Goku and Vegeta have so little to do in this story, is basically Goku and Vegeta fight the thing, and nothing really changes about them at all. You know, there, there's no effect on them. 
They haven't grown. Nothing's really changed in the world. It's just, you know, they fought for a little while and then that ended. Which is, which is kind of the same as Resurrection F. Where there's just no consequences, no, no long-term real things happening, you know? Um, and and, that, and that's just, that's been the saddest thing about all of this. Uh, do, 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 do. So, I, you know, I, I, I make it no secret that I genuinely think that Dragon Ball should die. This franchise, this franchise needs to end. Because it did end. You know, it ended great. You know, it ended over 20 years ago. Uh, and it, it told its story and it reached a conclusion naturally and it ended. And, and I hate when things come back just for the sake of coming back, especially... Like I said, in this case, where nothing really progresses. They just, you know, this is this is popular. So we're going to keep doing this, you know? And it sort of takes away what, what made Dragon Ball special in the first place. So it, so you might call me biased from coming at it from that perspective. That I'm just going to hate everything that comes out of it. But I try to be as fair as possible. There have been things that I have enjoyed out of this, this new Dragon Ball revival. Not a lot, but some. And I give credit where it's due. Uh, the Amcha manga was great. Probably the best thing to come out of this. Battle of Gods was awesome. Uh, Jocko, the, the Galactic Patrolman, aside from Dragon Ball Minus, was a great manga. Um, but, I don't know, Super was a disaster for the most part. There were some good episodes, but overall it was not impressive. Resurrection F was terrible. Tournament of Power was terrible. Um, but just because I feel that way, it doesn't mean I can't give credit where credit is due. And... Um, even, even a franchise that is as zombified as this one can turn out something good and enjoyable every now and then, and, and this did that. Um, I will say though, and this should come as no surprise to people who, who follow, follow my content, is that once the fighting started, the movie became much less interesting. Um, it all, it w like, like I said, it needed to be spaced out better, it needed to be more sectional, it needed to be more distinct, um... I've forgotten most of it. I had a hard time paying attention through the last 50 minutes, however, however long it was. Um, and I miss when Dragon Ball's fighting was memorable to me. It does, seem to be memorable, it does seem to be memorable to a lot of people, so I'm not speaking for everybody, but for me, I find it completely uh, just samey. You know, Goku and Vegeta go through their various transformations and then they punch, 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 fight, 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 fight for far too long. And, I don't know, it just all ran together. There's some good stylistic choices. It was kind of weird when they suddenly went inside of V'ger from Star Trek The Motion Picture. But, you know, it was a good stylistic choice. It looks good, from what I remember. But there's very little specifics about the battle that I remember at all. It was just, they fight, 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 fight. Fight some more. Look at my watch. Can I get back to, you know, Chi-Li and, and, and Limo, please? Because this is boring me. Um, and, and I guess that gets to the big thing. Or one of the big things, which, like with Broly, made me skeptical about this movie from the outset. That they were just going to do fan service -y things, and that's Gogeta. Which, I was not impressed when they brought him up uh, in the you know pre the run up to this movie, and the movie did nothing to change my mind about that. Um, I could have done without that. I really could have. It did not add anything to this movie. It was not terribly interesting. Uh, it was the same tired gags we've seen before. Yeah, I get it. Vegeta doesn't like the fusion dance. Can we move on now? And like, oh yes, I get it. They messed up, and now they're going. Now they're gonna be the skinny guy and then the fat guy. And yeah, just get on with it. You know, we've seen all this before, and you know, it was only mildly funny to begin with. Uh, and and um, I don't know. That's also like the big logistical problem for me too. It's not a huge one, but it's like really they they were gone for over an hour. Like, you know, Broly was just beating up on Frieza for an entire hour? Really? And it's like, that just goes to show how samey all the fighting looks because he just, I guess he just, just punch, 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 punch. You know, whatever. Uh, it, it, I just find it funny because of all the fan theories over the years of, oh, every, everything we're seeing in the show is slowed down for our benefit because they're really moving faster than the speed of light. And it's like, God, can you imagine? Can you imagine how much fighting would be in an hour if that was really the case? I mean, geez, you could fill like 50 episodes with what we didn't see in Frieza versus Broly. And my God, I do not want to see that. I do not want to see it. Um... 
But it's like, geez, could we have just, you know, I don't know. I, I didn't care about Gogeta in the slightest. In the slightest. That should not have been there. It had no reason to be there. It had no need to be there. I have no desire to ever see those two characters merge in any fashion ever again. You know, it's it's just pointless. It's just pointless. I don't care. I really don't care. Um, it was just it was pointless fan service. Was there for the hype, and I basically forgot what he did. The one thing I'll give it credit for is I did like when you know, just just like there are some good stylistic choices in this movie. Um, just like with the uh, the size chart for Frieza, I liked how when Piccolo was pointing out their angles, there actually did show like mathematical angles showing how they were wrong. That was funny. That was the only funny thing about this. Okay, I'm gonna try to wrap this up now. This has probably been f far longer than I wanted it to be, but um, I don't know. <laughs> just just to nitpick one little thing, um, since I was since I'm kind of in the neighborhood already, um, Piccolo is weird. Like I don't really get why he was in this movie. Uh, I mean, I, I guess he would be a good choice to teach the fusion dance as he knows it already, but but uh, just, it just seemed so random. Like, oh, hey, hey, Goku, what's up? I, I, I noticed that uh, the world's being destroyed. Um, can't do anything, though, so, uh, yeah, I don't really know why I contacted you. And then Goku's all like, you know, once they actually go to him, it's like, do you have any Senzu? And he's like, nope, don't have any. And Goku's like, darn, I don't, just, I don't know what to do now. If only I could teleport to a place... You know, the place where sins you come from. Nope, guess I can't do that. I'm just gonna stay with Piccolo. It's like, just why? Just why? That's just, just weird. Um, one other weird thing. Um, I, I don't know if I missed something, but it just didn't make any sense to me why King Vegeta had this, like, hate boner for Broly immediately. Immediately. Like, once he found out about him, you know, who he was, I get it. But it's like he's in this big birthing chamber or, like, you know, baby pod room, whatever. And they're, like, all these different, like, circular rows full of pods. And in the center, at the very top of the set of stairs, is, is Vegeta as a, as a child. Uh, because he's the best. He has the greatest potential. He deserves to be here. He's awesome. Whatever. Um, but, like, you know, so, so, so King Vegeta has to, like, walk up all these stairs past all these other pods... And you know, to go visit his son, he turns around, walks down one step, and looks at Broly. And is like, "What's he doing here? Who the hell is this? What what is he doing in the same room as my son?" There there are tons and tons of pods here, all over the place, all over the flipping place. Why do you single out this guy? You know, it just, that, that, that didn't make any sense to me. I I wondered if I missed something because that just seemed really really weird. That it's like, you know, it's not as if Vegeta was the only thing in this room and then all of a sudden, Broly. You know, there are tons of babies in here. What's so, you know, why does Broly get his attention? Uh, so that, that, that seemed kind of weird to me. But, you know, small thing. And again, maybe I just missed something. I don't know. Um, I, I, I would like to see more of, of chi Lai and Limo. And, and I guess Broly too, maybe. Uh, if, if there has to be some kind of follow-up to this, whatever. Um... <clears throat> I wanted to see more of them in this movie. Um, so there were definitely some problems, but, um, you know, and, and, and like I said, the, the moments, there are great moments, but they just don't really come together. That's the biggest problem with this movie. Um, so there, there are a lot of things that are enjoyable. That are genuinely enjoyable. Uh, genuinely really good. Uh, I just wish, this, I, I wish the movie had more focus. I wish it had less focus on fighting. Um, spaced it out better. You know, it needed to be less continuous fighting because that was just a slog to get through. I, I knew it would be. Um, and it just needed more focus in general because it seemed to be kind of all over the place. You know, it, it's because it, it wants to be a history of the science movie, but it also wants to be this character piece with Broly. And, and the way they make it, or at least the way they present it, those two things don't really mesh. Um, so yeah, that's all I have to say about it for now, I guess. Um... I probably, God, is this video an hour long? I don't know. Um, I hope you find this entertaining. Um, I'll be back doing, you know, real stuff hopefully soon. Just trying to catch up on my life right now. Because Dragon Ball Dissection December sort of takes, you know, my focus away from everything else in my life. I got like like three months worth of laundry over here. I got like, you know, receipts piling up over there, you know. So, real life happens, and December I get really behind on everything because I'm just doing nothing but making Dragon Ball videos. Um, but if you're new and you, you know, 
didn't find me to be completely annoyingly rambly. Um, please subscribe, like, comment, let me know what you think. Uh, check out some of these other videos. And I will see you soon. Bye.